Hey, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. And this is Christy in my closet in St. Louis. Good morning. Morning. How are things? Good. I'm like back from another trip <laughs> and glad that I don't have any others on the schedule. Oh, I feel that. Although it was fun because I saw Lady Gaga. <laughs> but. Oh man, the videos, my dudes. I felt like I was at the concert. The videos were so good. Oh, did you watch the videos that our friend posted? Well, no, you sent me some. <laughs> Did I? I remember? I did? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh. <laughs> of Lady Gaga, okay. not of like you. <laughs> no, I know, I know, but I was I did not realize. I that. said <laughs> if if she sings shallow, I'm going to oh, be right. so jealous and like you were like, well, and right then I guess she had started 30 like, seconds yes. later. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the music and we're like, oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. but you did send yep. me a couple before that and they were fantastic. Okay. Yeah, she's a good show. She's a good I show. Bet. So that was your anniversary present, right? Or well, mm-hmm. to yeah, it was kind of for both yeah. of us because it was. I mean, but yeah, Emery had said it for a long time that he's wanted to see Gaga in concert, so I made it happen. I love that. So it was fun. It's a good weekend, and school's starting. So yay today! Mm. <laughs> today, <gasps> well, oh, when, when this drops, <laughs> like wait, yeah. I thought I heard kids earlier. Okay. Um, yeah, so my school was supposed to start today also when this drops, and it got postponed oh my gosh. to <laughs> nine days later for those what counting. I mean, nine days. It's just there's something to do with the traffic light that the city or the county or something did not, it did not pass, it's like a new traffic light to be able to get into the school easier from the opposite side of the road and it didn't pass some kind of an inspection. So they have to do something else and it's going to take a week to do or whatever. How long has the traffic light been there? It's brand new. Oh, it's a brand new traffic okay. light. Like they just, I mean, it's been there like a month or they've been building or, you know how you have to, you don't build a traffic light, but you know, <laughs> piece by piece, it's like Legos. <laughs> <laughs> They've been installing this traffic light. Right. I yeah. guess the summer. I don't know the specifics. I, so that is fascinating to me because I feel like, yes, the traffic lights go up all the time. And so I've never noticed that. Well, because they're closing the road or they're not closing the road. Okay. So they, the school is on I'm a four lane highway. Just okay. off a four lane highway. And there used to be a median. So they took out the median so that people coming from the other way could turn left into the school across okay. the other lanes. So they had to put mm-hmm. a light there So because oh. pe- they took the median out. So they had to put a light so it would have a left-hand turn signal to go into the school. Okay. So the light is new. Right. The whole right. layout of the road is I get it. I guess I'm new. just like shocked that you put up a light and it doesn't pass inspection i just feel like i don't know that i've seen that i'm quite shocked as well yeah i I bet you are with all the other parents on the facebook page (laughs) yeah yeah i can imagine my kids are like yay one fun thing though is so they're supposed to start monday and jack johnson is coming to raleigh on Sunday night, and we were like, man, that we love Jack Johnson. The kids like Jack Johnson. We should totally go to the concert, but it doesn't start till 7.15, and it's the first day of school is the next day. Mm-hmm. So as soon as they canceled school, I was like, we're going to Jack Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> concert tickets. Awesome. You're going to have another good story to tell us next time. <laughs> oh, no. He's no Lady Gaga. Well, I know, but still. Maybe it'll be, like, cute to see the kids yeah or something Man, i'll send a video to anyway. you so that's it that's all i Anywho. have nine more days of children <sighs> i have all this construction going on at my house that's it yeah and i have yeah, a crime story a... if you don't have anything else oh i don't got anything all else right. i'd love to hear a crime let's story. do that okay here we go Okay, this case was recommended by my niece back in West Virginia, Hannah. Oh, 
How nice. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hannah has given us another suggestion before. I think maybe a couple, but one that I have definitely done. So it was really good. So thank you, Hannah. For today's case, we are going to small town Tennessee. The- what? We were just in Tennessee last? Well, somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. This is not a big Brentwood case like that. This is in Decatur County, Tennessee. And the entire county is only 1,200 people. Oh. The whole county. That's a small county. It's very yeah. small. It's very rural, rural place. I hate that word. I do too. It's an impossible <laughs> word. With mostly woods and farms. Everyone hunts. Everyone wears camo and boots. And they all have some serious twang in their accents, which you know I am very here for. Mm-hmm. It is just because I know you like to visualize on a map. So it is about a oh yeah, yeah. I know a hundred miles southwest of Nashville. Okay, I heard had heard of this case only by name. Did not know any details. This is the case of Holly Bobo. Oh my gosh, I totally know this case. You do? Do you know like <laughs> I do. details of it? Yes. Awesome. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> I love that. That never. Happened. I don't want to say any of them because I clearly am waiting for you to tell. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. So Holly Lynn Bobo was born on October 12th of 1990 in Darden, Tennessee. Her parents were Dana and Karen Bobo, and she had an older brother named Clint. Holly is a cute little blonde. She has blue eyes. She's very pretty. She loved animals. She had lots of pets. She sang in her church choir. She was very close with her mother. Very close. They were cute. And she is said to have possessed a caring, loving, and kind personality. At the time of this case in 2011, Holly was attending nursing school at the University of Tennessee at Parsons Center, which is in Parsons, Tennessee, not far from her where she lived in Darden. She was 20 years old and she lived in the home she grew up in with her parents and her brother. Okay. Holly was dating a cute little country boy named Drew. The two of them had been together for about two years and he had just recently given her a promise ring. Oh. Yes. Did you ever get a promise ring? I did. I did did. too. It didn't, the promise was broken, but. Yeah, no, not with that person. So I don't really think it was a a promise, but. (laughs) Sweet though. And they were just as cute as they could be. They really were. Are are they, by the way, are they still a thing? Because I mean, clearly 2011, it it, it was. Promise? I think they're still a thing. Oh, I hope so. It is a cute idea. Yeah, you're engaged to be engaged. Right. That's what my mom said when I got. She was yeah. like, "So you're promising that you're going to be engaged?" I'm like, "I don't know, mom." It's just like, give me a ring. Yeah, give me a ring. <laughs> you put you a, put a ring on it. <laughs> She's gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Spidey. Okay. <laughs> so on the morning of Wednesday, April thirteenth, two thousand eleven, Holly woke up early around four thirty a.m. to study for a nursing exam that she had that day. That tells you what kind of person she is. I feel like. Yeah. All right. Right. Not me. No. Her parents got up and left for work around seven, which was their normal time. And Clint normally would have also left around that time as well to go to school. But that day, his class had been canceled. So he decided to sleep in. Mm. At 730, Holly spoke with her boyfriend, Drew. Drew had the day free and he asked Holly if she thought it would be okay if he went turkey hunting on her grandma's property in another part of the county. Holly told him she thought it would be fine, but said, call my mom at work, call Karen, and double check. Karen was an elementary school teacher. Around 7.45 or so, Holly grabbed her school books and her homework and her lunch that her mom had packed her, and she headed out, I know, isn't that cute? And she headed out to get in her Mustang to drive to class for her exam. Around that time, a neighbor heard a woman's scream coming from the direction of the Bobo house. So when I say neighbor, I don't mean like our neighbors. Mm -hmm. 
they're separated by woods, lots of land and space. And I think actually in this case, there was a lake in between. So it would be a pretty loud scream for her to hear it. That's right. And also the neighbor was not close enough to see anything. Mm -hmm. But this neighbor was sure that he had heard a scream coming from the Bobo house. So the neighbor called Karen, Holly's mom, at work and said, I just heard a scream coming from your house. Is everything okay? At that same time, Clint, the brother, was woken up by the family's dogs barking. So he didn't hear a scream, but the dogs were definitely startled by something. And so he got up and looked outside. When he looked, he saw Holly in the garage with a man. The two of them were facing each other, and he says that they were kneeling down in the garage. Okay. So, which is odd. Mm -hmm. They weren't like standing mm -hmm. there talking. And he couldn't hear what they were saying, but he could tell that they were upset, especially Holly. He said that the man was in full camo and had a hat on and that he assumed it was Holly's boyfriend, Drew. Right. Yeah, that would make kind of sense. Right. Like who else would be out there talking to Holly? They appeared to be arguing about something. And so Clint was like, yeah, I'm not getting in the middle of that. Then his phone rang. It was his mom. His mom said, I just got a weird call from the neighbor. Is everything okay at the house? And Clint said, did Holly not have class today? And Karen mm -hmm. was like, yes, she does. Why? And so he tells her that Holly and Drew were outside and it looked like they were arguing or like going through something. He then said that the two of them were starting to walk towards the woods. So Karen's blood immediately went cold because she had just gotten off the phone with Drew minutes before that. Remember, he called her and asked if he could turkey hunt. So she knew mm -hmm. he was hunting miles away from their home. So she said, Clint, that's not Drew. Get a gun and shoot him. Oh, my gosh. Immediate red flags for mom. And Clint, Clint didn't know that his mom had just talked to Drew. So he was like, um, you want me to shoot Drew? Karen hangs up the phone and immediately calls 911. Like, she's like, yes, mm -hmm. go get a gun, mm -hmm. go outside. And then she hangs up and she calls 911. Uh, what mama bear instincts she has. Gosh. I know, right? So Clint is confused, right? And he's watching Holly and this man walking away. And he realizes as he's watching them that the man was not the same build as Drew. So he's like, oh, okay, maybe that's not Drew. So he calls Holly's cell phone. She doesn't answer. He calls Drew's cell phone. He doesn't answer. So he grabs a gun and he went outside. And he, when he's calling, does he still see them? He's still seeing them walking, I think. I'm not sure. That's okay. not clear. I don't know. I don't actually know okay. the answer to okay. that. So he gets a gun. He goes outside. And as he walks like to the garage where her car was, he sees blood, like blood splatters in the garage. Mm -hmm. So he immediately calls 911 as well. You can listen to both 911 calls. They're both pretty frantic, mom and and Clint, especially mom. Mom is like, someone grabbed my daughter and took her into the woods. You have to go now. And they're like, what? Mm -hmm. Okay, so police arrive in less than 10 minutes, and they began processing the garage and organizing searches for the woods. They don't find any sign of Holly or anyone else in the woods behind the Bobo home where Clint saw them walking. And they discover that on the other side of those woods was a service road that was pretty secluded. So they speculated that she was walked through the woods and taken to that service road and then put in a car and driven away. Mm -hmm. So they are immediately on high alert. They're like, she's been kidnapped. They thought right away that whoever took Holly had likely staked out their property previously that they probably knew the family's routines and thought that Holly would have been home alone because normally she would have been because remember Clint normally would have been gone, but his class was canceled that day. They think they knew what time Holly left for school in the morning and that they knew about that service road right through those woods mm -hmm. because they immediately took her right through there. Clint described the man he saw with Holly as being a white male he was around 5'10 and about 200 pounds. 
He was in head to toe camo and had long, dark hair sticking out below his hat that covered his neck and touched his collar. Hmm. He said that the man had something black in his hand. And at the time, he thought that it was a turkey call because remember, he thought this was Drew. Mm -hmm. But now looking back, he says, well, that maybe could have been a gun or a knife or something else. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't really know what it was. I just assumed. And Drew doesn't have long hair that like covers his neck. He does not know. And he is not 5'10 and he is not 200 pounds. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there were about 50 blood blood spots scattered on the garage floor and a small pool of blood about the size of an apple. The blood was confirmed to be Holly's, but there was no other DNA found. So no one else's blood, no one else's DNA anywhere. And no more blood in the woods going towards that surface. It's not stated. No, I don't Mm -hmm. know. Police in the community began a massive search for Holly. They searched miles of woods around Holly's house, up and down that service road. They spanned out from there. They conducted searches in parts of two counties. So very expansive searches. They had people searching on foot, four wheelers, horses, dirt bikes. They did air searches. They had dogs. They put up missing persons flyers all over the county in neighboring counties. The search for Holly Bobo still goes down in the record books books as the most expensive missing persons investigation in the state of Tennessee. Oh, wow. Huge resources and efforts. And even though they had all of that, there was no sign of Holly. They never, Hmm. they couldn't find her. No, nowhere. But as they searched, they kept finding Holly's belongings in various places throughout the town. This is eerie. Yeah. So in some places they would find, like in one place they found her school books. And then in another place in the town, all like just discarded, thrown in the woods, Mm -hmm. off the side of a road, stuff like that. They found a receipt with her name and phone number on it. They found homework of hers that had her name and the date that she went missing. So like she was turning that homework in that day. Yeah. They found like study cards, you know, like index cards that you use for studying. They found her lunchbox on the side of a road with her lunch still in it. Hmm. And every time that they found something, they kept holding out hope that it was Holly leaving these things behind as like breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. Right. But they did just seem to be like randomly scattered, almost even to throw people off. They weren't like necessarily strategically placed. Mm -hmm. Police traced Holly's cell phone and it pinged through the woods behind her house to the service road. And then it went north up the service road. It stopped in a wooded area right off Interstate 40 and it was there for like 20 minutes. And then it turned and went back south, but going a different route. So it almost made like a like a candy cane shape. Mm -hmm. Like if you're looking at it like that and then when, when, and then it just stops, like it makes like a hook Mm -hmm. and then it just stops and there's no activity on it anymore after that. Mm -hmm. So they end up going to that place where it stopped, like the end of the trail of the pings and they found her phone with the SIM card removed, Ah. but no Holly. So in total, her cell had moved for about an hour and a half. Witnesses also came forward claiming to have seen a white pickup truck driving down that service road during the time that Holly went missing. A white service truck? A white like pickup truck. Oh, a pickup truck. Uh-huh. Sorry. Oh, down the service road. Sorry. Right. I confused all the words into one. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Then. Yeah. Okay. So police initially looked into Clint, Holly's brother, because mm-hmm. he was the only person there. They questioned him immediately. He was polygraphed twice, which shows you how much they looked into him. He passed both times. They inspected him for scratches, signs of a struggle, defensive wounds. They searched his belongings for like camo or weapons or anything like that. Eventually, he was cleared because there was just no sign he was involved. Plus, he was home and on the phone 
with both his mom and 911 during those critical minutes that she went missing. And he called her phone. He called Drew's phone. His phone was pinging at their house. Right. Yeah. During the time that she would have had to have been taken. Right. So he was cleared. Police also looked into Drew, Holly's boyfriend. He had been on the phone with both Holly and Holly's mom that morning, and his cell phone pinged where he said he was on Holly's grandma's land. He was hunting with several people who confirmed that he was there, and multiple members of Holly's family were also with him. Mm -hmm. So they saw him too. So the family would not lie about where Drew was. Mm -hmm. So he was quickly right. cleared. Police then honed in on a local sex offender named Terry Britt. And when I say honed in, they were after him. They were like, this is it. <laughs> well, they just wanted to make sure. So mm -hmm. Terry met the description that Clint had given to the police of the man that he saw. Same height, similar weight. He had long, dark hair. He also had a history of stalking, attacking, and raping young blonde females. Oh, Lord have mercy. So Holly fits in his victim profile. Mm -hmm. And he was out of jail during the time that she disappeared. He was questioned. He was polygraphed. He passed. Terry said that he was with his wife that day, that morning, buying and installing a new bathtub in hmm. their home. He does produce a receipt for the bathtub, but no one at the store could definitively confirm whether he was there or not. So he had right. a receipt, but it was like a handwritten receipt. You know what oh. I'm saying? So it wasn't like an electronic receipt. And I mean, he did buy a bathtub that day or may, or someone bought a bathtub that day that he had a receipt for, but no one in the store was like, oh yeah, we saw him. Right. They were like, right. he may have been here. I mean, he has a receipt. And a bathtub, but we don't know who bought that. We can't confirm mm -hmm. it. So he does have an alibi, but it's not like super solid. Right. The police are still side eyeing him. They search his house, they search his property, they search his car, they can't find anything. They put surveillance on him, like they followed him around. They wiretapped his phone and bugged his home. Oh, what? Whoa, okay. Nothing ever linked him to Holly or her disappearance. So, like, you can see how many resources were being used to, like, right. try and find who took this girl and I'm investigate. sure there's assuming that if, like, he's going to talk about it, it'll come up, you know, wiretapping and bugging his house. Like, he just said something. Oh. Right. You would think. <laughs> right. So, he that went nowhere. He wasn't necessarily cleared. It just, they didn't, mm -hmm. there was no evidence. So police at this point basically have nothing. They have no good leads, no concrete evidence, no Holly. Right. And Holly's case goes cold. Mm. Until March of 2014, almost three years later. Police arrested a known drug addict named Dylan Adams. Dylan was arrested on illegal weapons charges. While being taken into custody and charged on these gun charges, he said he wanted to confess to Holly's murder. Oh, wow. Dylan told police, okay, stay with me. Mm -hmm. He told police that his brother, Zach Adams, and two cousins that they were friends with, Jason Autry and Shane Austin, were all involved in the abduction, rape, beating, murder, and disposal of Holly Bobo. He claimed that his brother and Shane Austin kidnapped Holly, brought her back to Zach's house, beat her, raped her, and ultimately killed her and disposed of her body. And he said that he participated in the rape. Right. And then they disposed of her body with the help of Jason, Shane's hmm. cousin. Zach, uh, Dylan also said that he doesn't know where Holly's body was. He didn't have anything to do with killing her or disposing of her body, but that he was involved in sexually assaulting her and that Zach had videos of it. Oh, goof. gosh. So, of course, her poor family, years later, is finding out this horrific information, and they're devastated because although they, they feel like she's not with them anymore – or living because she would have come home or whatever. I mean, this kills all hope. 
you know. Right. Does he give like details like um I'm the one that was dressed in camel cam, camel <laughs> camo in the you know cuz clearly only one person was there. No, he well, says in, he in sight. He showed up at Zach's house and Holly was already there. Ah, okay. So he didn't have he anything have to, to do with the kidnapping or her murder. He didn't kill her, he didn't kidnap her, and he didn't do anything with her body. He just came to the house and they were all assaulting her and he joined it. Okay. So police charge Dylan with the rape and kidnapping and murder, all that stuff of Holly being involved. And they brought in his brother, Zach Adams, and the two cousins, Jason Autry and Shane Austin. All four of these men were known drug addicts. They all used multiple substances, cocaine, pills, but mostly methamphetamine. And mm -hmm. Zach was also a dealer. They all had criminal histories, mostly drug-related, but some violent crimes. Zach had actually been arrested previously for shooting his mom in the knee when she refused to give him money. Okay, Zach. Yeah, like that's horrible your mom mm -hmm. right phone records show that these men had all been in close cell contact on the day of holly's disappearance and zach and shane's cell phones pinged in a similar locations as holly's okay do they have a connection to her Shh, well i'll get there okay i'll get there we're not sure Okay. Shane also met the description that Holly's brother had given of the man he saw walking with Holly into the woods. And Zach also had a white pickup truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the theory is that Shane kidnapped her in camo, walked her through the woods, and Zach picked them up in his truck and then took them back to Zach's house, which is right. when Dylan shows up. They also had a lot of people coming forward and giving statements that Zach had been bragging about murdering Holly for years. He would threaten people and say, you're going to end up in a hole just like Holly did. Um, you know, just comments like that. There was one person that even reported that Zach said, I couldn't have picked a prettier B. Mm. Gosh. So police charged Zach with first-degree murder, kidnapping, and rape. It was also reported, too, that he bragged about having a video of her, which is what Dylan said, remember? But police mm -hmm. never found that on his phone. Okay. Okay. So now that's three of the people, right? So we think Shane kidnapped her. Zach picked him up. Dylan shows up after the fact. So now we have Jason Autry. So they bring him in. Jason Autry told police that he was not involved in the kidnapping, rape, or murder of Holly, but that he was involved after the fact. So Jason is a meth addict, and he said he called Zach to buy some meth, and Zach said he needed his help. When he went to Zach's, he saw Zach, Dylan, and Shane all there. He said there was a burn barrel on fire, at their house and that Shane said they all needed to get the hell out of there. Zach asked Jason if he would help him bury a body and said there was a body wrapped in a blanket in the back of Zach's truck, but that he had no idea who it was. So Jason was like, if you give me drugs, I'll help you. And Jason said, you shouldn't bury the body. We should sink it in the river. Hmm. So they drove under a bridge and discussed putting the body into the Tennessee River. As they were moving the body out of the truck, Jason said he saw movement under the blanket and heard a groaning noise. Oh, gosh. So he yells, she's still alive. And Zach went to his truck, got a gun, and shot Holly once in the head. Gosh. So then they got spooked that someone may have heard the gunshots. So they loaded Holly back into the truck. And at that point, Jason was like, I'm freaked out. Like, I'm out. You need to take me back to my car, which Zach does. He said he doesn't know what Zach did with Holly's body after that. And he admitted to being high the entire time. Mm. So Jason was given a plea deal in exchange for his testimony against Zach. And he pled guilty and was sentenced to eight years. 
Okay. But he's got to testify against Zach right. and testify to this, what he said. Mm-hmm. So Shane Austin was the other man who was implicated in Holly's. He was the one that, that they thought actually kidnapped her. He was the man in the camo. Shane refused to cooperate with police and he was actually found in a hotel. He was arrested, but he bailed out of jail and was found in a hotel room in Florida and he had taken his own life. Oh man. Okay. It's later reported that Shane had been somewhat obsessed with Holly. There's one report that they were at a coon hunt, which is like a big thing in this town apparently. And that he like kept staring at her and following them around to the point where Holly said to Drew, you need to take me home. Like this guy's freaking me out. Is um, I'm hoping that's a raccoon hunt. It is. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it is. And it's a no kill hunt too. I felt like I should say that. Okay. Well, I just needed to clarify that too, because right. we are in the South. Oh, bless. Word, word, word used for other things. So. You're right about that. This is a raccoon <laughs> hunt. Okay. Okay. And also after that, after her disappearance, it was reported that Shane had like scratches and marks and stuff on his arms. Okay. In July of 2014, this is kind of a side note, two other men were arrested in connection with Holly's um, murder. They were brothers, and they were charged with accessory after the fact and tampering with evidence because one of their girlfriends had come forward and reported that she had seen a portion, like a snip of the video of Holly. Oh, and like on her on his phone, on her boyfriend's phone. And then the other brother had admitted to shooting the video. These charges were later dropped, though, when police could not connect them to any of the four other men that had been arrested and could not find the video on any one mm-hmm. phone. In the end, over 20 phones had been analyzed and no video was ever found. Gosh, but it keeps goodness. coming up. Mm -hmm. Over and over again. So it's very strange. I don't know where it is. So if this isn't a big enough roller coaster for you and poor Holly's family, on September 7th of 2014, Holly's remains were found. Oh, so this, I mean, good, but gosh. Right. This was six months after the arrests. So they made those arrests with nobody. Mm -hmm. And it's three and a half years after Holly's disappearance. Her remains were found by two ginseng hunters just off Interstate 40. Ginseng hunting is a big thing, by the way. Is it really? You can make a lot of money. Huh. Because I had to look it up. (laughs) That was like, I didn't even know Tennessee had ginseng growing wildly in the woods, but... So it's just wild. So they literally have to like search for it and you can make it. A- it's kind of like, you know, mushroom hunters. Yeah. You know, we have like, how many cases have we had where mushroom hunters have come across right. remains oh, yeah, and stuff like random stuff. So, but it's ginseng in Tennessee. It's like, why don't we just do a ginseng farm? <laughs> you can <laughs> make a, a lot farm. of money. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Scratch that. From trademark. The record. Trademark. <laughs> um. So her remains were actually found at the bottom of a cell tower. Do you remember when I was telling you about how her phone moved and it went up Mm -hmm. and kind of made a candy cane shape, but at one point it had stopped for 20 minutes? That's Mm -hmm. near where her remains were actually found, ultimately, which they searched. But they searched that area before. Oh. So this, and they just didn't find her. Huh. Interesting. But uh, they do believe she was there the whole time. Well, gosh. I know. Unfortunately, we'll talk about that later. So this was this where her remains were found was f- about five six miles from Zach Adams' home, and they did confirm that Zach's cell phone had also pinged in that area. Okay, a, a lot of the cases based around cell phone pings, and which sounds like just super solid evidence, but this was 2011, and it just was not as accurate as it is now. Like, it's 11 years ago. There were a lot less cell phones. And so the radius area that each cell phone tower would cover was much bigger than it is now. And so where now they could say, I'm in my house. 
back mm-hmm. then it was more like she's within a mile of her house. Mm-hmm. So right. you got to keep that in mind. So all that was recovered, Holly's remains, they'd been scattered. There was elements, there was animals. Um, so all they recovered was Holly's skull, her teeth, like her jawbone and cheekbones and teeth, several ribs and one shoulder blade. Gosh, wow. But that was enough because there was a bullet wound to the back of Holly's skull and the bullet had exited through her left cheek. Oh, and also, this is just a sad, sad note, but that promise ring that Drew had given her was also found with her remains, which I know I saw a picture of it and I was like, oh, my heart. All right. Her cause of death was listed as a gunshot wound to the head. It was ruled a homicide, obviously. The owner of the property said that apparently they owned a whole bunch of property. I mean, so much that there was a cell phone tower on their property and Mm -hmm, said trespassers came onto the property, like on the land illegally all the time. They never saw or heard anything. There was also a white bucket that was found near her remains. It's actually what the ginseng hunter saw first. They saw a white bucket turned over and went to go pick it up and see what it was. And that's when they saw her skull. It's Mm -hmm. believed that that bucket was connected with the disposal of her body somehow, but they don't, they just don't know what it was used for or how specifically. Mm -hmm. So by the time Holly's remains are found, we already have four people who have been identified as being involved or participated in her murder. So we have Shane Austin who completed suicide We have Jason Autry, who took a plea deal and agreed to testify. And then we have two that are awaiting trial. Brothers, Zach Adams and Dylan Adams. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also Karen, Holly's mom. Remember I told you she was a school teacher? She taught them. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. In like fourth grade or something. She taught Zach and Jason. Gosh. Can you imagine? That is like some small town nightmare. Yeah. So Zach Adams went on trial in September of 2017. There is no forensic evidence in this case. None. Right. There's no murder weapon, no DNA, no fingerprints, and a badly decomposed body with a gunshot Mm -hmm. wound. But there is a lot of circumstantial evidence against against Zach. So we have the cell phone pings. We have his truck being spotted. We have his criminal history, which shows violence. Lots of people testified about him bragging about Holly's murder. We have Dylan's confession, the brother, who, by the way, he later recanted that confession and said that he was coerced and he is intellectually disabled, which he actually is intellectually disabled. Um, he reminds me of that Brendan Dassey You know, Mm -hmm. the guy who claims that he was confessed and didn't know what he was saying. Anyway, people equate his confession to that guy's Mm -hmm. confession. And then the nail in Zach's coffin was his friend, Jason Autry's testimony against him. Okay. Which confirms that he shot her in the head, which is backed up by what they found when Mm -hmm. they found her remains. So... During the trial, this is going back to their connection to Holly. So Jason testified that Zach knew Holly because he had dated Holly's cousin, who was a stripper. Mm -hmm. She did have a stripper cousin. Okay. The cousin, the stripper cousin, showed Zach a picture of Holly and said, look at my beautiful cousin. We look so much alike. We should have a threesome, whatever. And so that's how Zach knew Holly. He also said, Jason also said that the reason they were going to the Bobo house that morning was not to get Holly. It was to teach Clint how to cook meth. Does does Clint corroborate this? He absolutely denies this completely. Like he has, he's no history of drug abuse or ties to it or anything like that. And so he is like, they are absolutely lying. Are they just trying to say that it wasn't premeditated? (laughs) Oh, we were going to do something else and we just came across her. Possibly, but Jason has no reason to do that. He's already only been sentenced to eight years. Right. So like, he doesn't have, there's no reason for him to, like he's testifying against Zach. He's not going to also bail him out a little bit too. 
Well, well, I was going to say, but maybe, maybe he's like, well, I'm going to testify against you, but maybe I'll help you get a lesser sentence if it's not premeditated. Possible he is a shady dude. They don't seem like that. They're that smart, though. <laughs> well, that's true. And that's actually what the, that's what their defense says. Right. They're like, these are drug dealers. They're drug addicts. This is elaborate. Mm-hmm. There's no way they could have come up with this. That's that's mm-hmm. part of their defense is like they are too stupid to do this. <laughs> So Jason says that Holly came out yelling at them, like, get off our property. Clint doesn't need to be around you guys or involved with you guys. And when she came out, they kidnapped her. Oh, well, I mean, I guess that's plausible. If Well, it would have completely gone against Clint's entire account of what happened. Well, not completely. He looked outside and saw her arguing with somebody, which was, get off my property. I don't want you near my brother. I mean, it's true. It just, it implicates him a lot more. Like if they were coming, he knew they were coming. So he would have known who it was. So when they walked off with Holly in the woods, he would have been like, hey, Jason and Zach, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. Also, this was at 730 in the morning. And like, I don't know, this doesn't make any sense probably. But like, who cooks meth at 730 in the morning? I don't know if there's like a prime meth cooking time, but it just seems. Meth heads. I guess. I don't don't really know much about them. Although I feel like it is quite a lengthy process, so you probably have to start early. Maybe so. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) To watch Breaking Bad. (laughs) I haven't watched it. I know. I have not. Okay. After an 11-day trial, Zach was convicted of the first-degree murder, kidnapping, and rape of Holly Bobo. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for her murder and then given an additional 50 years for the rape and kidnapping. Okay. He is currently serving his time in a Tennessee prison and maintains his innocence. I did see that he tried to appeal and it's been denied. Okay. So that leaves Dylan Adams, who is the one that started it all. Remember, he is mm-hmm. the one that got arrested mm-hmm. on gun charges and was like, let's talk about Holly. So because of Zach's unanimous conviction and the fact that he had confessed, he believed that he would also be convicted. And so he took a plea deal in January of 2018. He chose to make an Alford plea, which we've talked about before. But if you don't know, this is a guilty plea in which you are not admitting to the crime, but conceding that there is enough evidence for your conviction. Mm -hmm. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison. And he will be eligible parole in 2050 sometime. Mm. Oh, and Jason Autry, the guy who turned state's witness, the one that testified against Zach, he served his time and was released from prison in September of 2020. But a couple months later, he was arrested again on meth charges. So he's back in jail now. You didn't get off meth in those eight years? Well, you def- <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Can you get meth in prison? I don't know. Um, So this was interesting to me. As a part of his plea deal, the Bobo family asked that he talk about the testimony that he gave about Clint cooking meth. And they asked him to specifically publicly state that that was false and that Clint was in no way involved. Hmm. So that's, in, see, I, your side eye in that too. And I also mm-hmm. think that's weird. Here's why. I don't know if Clint was involved. I don't know if Clint wanted to cook meth. I'm not saying that. I'm not accusing him of that. What I'm saying is Zach was convicted because of Jason's statement. So we're all expected to believe that Jason's statement was true, except that one part. Mm-hmm. About Clint, that seems mm-hmm. that's tough for me. It, it's tough for me too because I, uh, personal opinion, <laughs> and and not saying that Clint is was truly truly part of this, but like I I feel like it could be a situation where Clint was intending to cook meth that day was expecting them to come, saw this interaction outside, but truly did think it was Drew at first until he realized it wasn't. And then what? Just has been lying ever since? Well, he didn't want to get in trouble for meth. And maybe thinking, these guys aren't going to do anything to my, like, 
truly do anything bad to my sister maybe i don't i don't know that part i can't i can't reconcile that part right. but i can see yes he's expecting these guys to come but at first he did not know it was one of them outside that he did believe it was drew and they were talking or arguing about something and ignored it but then by the time he realized it wasn't it was too late like she was gone and now he's so gone. far into the lie that he can't can't change possibly. now. Hmm. Possibly. That seems possibly. more plausible to me than, I don't know, to me. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I agree. I think that's very weird. I just think I'm all or nothing when it comes to testimony like that. Like, if you're lying about one thing, you're probably lying about all of it. And that's just kind of mm -hmm. how I feel. And so the fact that he had to admit he was lying about that, well, like, he has to admit he perjured himself that he was lying about it. But just that one part, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, so you're saying that we shouldn't believe any of what he's saying? I don't, I'm not saying that. No, I, I just am saying that's tough for me. Right. Like in most cases, if we're going to believe a person's testimony, I just need to believe the whole thing. Right. So it's hard. Which is it's what, hard for me to, to, like you said, reconcile that. Which is why I'm I I my brain goes there because it's right. like the family wants Clint's name to be cleared. He's going for a plea deal, so he's like, "Well, fine, I'll just say that part's not true." Right? Like, whatever. Right. It doesn't change anything. Well, no, <laughs> for not for him. It didn't. No, nope, sure didn't. Yeah. So, okay. So, I really enjoyed all of the Tennessee twang that was involved in this case. I don't know what it is about it, but like. When people, it just makes me feel more feelings when people are talking about Holly like this. You know what I mean? Like, it, I don't know why it just makes me like feel worse for them or like mm. sympathize with them more or something. I can't, I can't, I don't know. I can't explain it. It's just what happened. Mm -hmm. Holly's cousin is a pretty successful country artist. Her name is Whitney Duncan, and she wrote a song in memory of Holly, a really country song called Better Place. Mm -hmm. That was it. That sent me over the edge. <laughs> I was done. I was like, I'm going to bed with my box of tissues. I'm done. And that is the case of Holly Bobo. That's a good one. That's a good one. I got to tell you what I was thinking about at the very end. First of all, these men are monsters. Well, yes. All of them. Monsters. And this mm -hmm. family is 100%. strong and amazing. And my heart really goes out to them for the awful, tragic situation that they were in for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Also, it really made me think of the Maura Murray case. I'm going to tell you why. So Maura Murray, if you don't remember, she got in a car accident and disappeared. And one of the theories was that she, it was very cold and that she may have been intoxicated and she walked into the woods and succumbed to the elephant elements and died. I'm okay. The elephants got her. Sorry. 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 I'm tired. It's been a long morning. <laughs> okay. She succumbed to the elements. But the big argument is they were such extensive searches that they would have found her body. Mm -hmm. But that also happened in this case. There, It was the most extensive and expensive search in Tennessee history. And they had her cell, they had a radius of where she pinged and searched it extensively and still mm -hmm. did not find her remains. And so it makes me think that Maura Murray is in the woods. I'm sure she is. It, that definitely makes me think that she is. For sure. Anyway just wanted to say that it's also really scary that she got taken from her home holly like i know she was in her home she was literally standing beside her car with her brother watching yeah. and neighbors hearing yeah right it's I really mean, scary how 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 close can you could you have gotten within like minutes seconds of like her being taken where people are like calling and saying you've got to find her you know She's gone missing. Right. I mean, literally, literally minutes. I, and they did such a good job. I feel like the neighbors, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you're like, oh, I heard somebody screaming. That's awful. I wonder what that was. Let me listen again. Oh, I don't hear it now. Let me go on about my day. The neighbor did not do that. The neighbor was like, I'm calling her mom. I'm calling right. Karen. This is unusual. This isn't like we usually hear kids screaming, playing in the woods. 
Right. It's but they, an unusual thing. And it was quickly acted on. We, we get right. frustrated yeah. because people mm. don't pick up the phone or don't say anything to anybody until after the fact and all that stuff. And this, this, they did, they did stuff. They mm-hmm. acted on it right away. Right. It's, yeah. <gasps> anyway, sad, sad case. It is very sad case. I, I totally love the name Bobo. Bobo. I know that's, I think that's why I remember her case. I didn't remember all of the details specifically, but I remember that she was a nurse, nursing student or whatever. Um, her brother was home. She had gone missing right from her house into the woods, had been found, but I don't, I didn't remember like, and I knew that the boyfriend was implicated, well, thought of because he, you know, was going hunting. Yeah. But I didn't remember all the rest of the details. So anyway, very good. Very well done. Thank you. I remember also that it was another true crime garage. Mara Murray. Yeah. True crime garage in this one was too. <laughs> it's true. Oh, I didn't listen to true crime garages on either of those cases. Actually, I wonder if they made that connection about Mora and Holly and being lost in the woods and all that stuff. I don't remember them saying anything like that. Huh. Clearly, it's been a long time, I feel like, since um, they've done it. But I feel like, and I could be totally off on this, that there's a chance that they played her song. Oh, you should. It's well, actually, you know what? I'm on that, don't listen to it. Go in our show notes and find the YouTube video of it because there's a video and it shows all these home videos of Holly. Uh, it's too much. It's I was so done. That's a good song. I I want to say that they played it or something. Yeah, but I can't remember. Uh, anyway, yes. Thank uh, you, Hannah. Thank also you. for the suggestion. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you, Beth, for. For checking into that one and bringing it back out there. That was <sighs> meth. Meth. <laughs> this is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Don't do it. Yeah. Like, and watch out for those elephants in the woods. Oh, I seriously, you brought it up again. I'm going <laughs> to die again. I, I almost could not compose myself. You kept talking, and I was like, thank goodness, because I'm still laughing. <laughs> she succumbed to the elephants. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Anyway, um, if you like what you hear, come find us on Patreon because there's even more um, of it. And I don't know. It, it's different, though. You want to hear it. <laughs> we do some silly stuff, but we also do some more of these gem of episodes of crime too. So come find us on Patreon. We have links in our bios on Facebook and Instagram. Come find us on Instagram or Facebook. If you haven't already, send us an email. Some people still email us, crimesandclosets at gmail.com. Yes. Um, And just always remember the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closets.